Euzu billahi mineşşeytanir racim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve la akibetu lil muttaqin ve la udwana illa alaz zalimin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmaîn. Ve men tabi'ahu bi ihsan ila yawmiddin. Subhaneke la ilme lana illa ma'allamtana inneke entel alimul hakim. سبحانك لا ما فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد اللهم صل صلاة كاملة وسلم سلاما تاما على سيدنا محمد الذي تنحل به العقد وتنفرج به الكرب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحسن الخواتم ويستسقى القمام بوجهه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا وشاكرا وتوبة نصوحا ربي يسر ولا تعسر ربي تمم الخير ربي زدني علما وفهما وألحقنا بالصالحين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ودعاء لا يسمع وعمل لا يرفع ونفس لا تشبع يا حي قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا قدوس يا سلام لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم يا الله يا رحمن يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا قدوس يا سلام لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My respected brothers and very respected sisters جزاكم الله خير جزاء for having the patience to wait this evening we had some technical difficulty with our cameras. Uh, we, have, we had to swap our camera. The software was not responding because we had an accident with one of our cameras. Alhamdulillah, we are back on the track. And I welcome you all, everybody, including the people who are watching us over the internet. Inshallah, in this beautiful Tuesday evening, although we started very late, we will be starting, we'll be finishing inshallah in 40-45 minutes time. I do not want to prolong this tonight's session. Inshallah ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. I want to concentrate on page 40 of our Munabbihat by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. You should have a copy of it before you. Just for the barakah inshallah, I will read the first two, then after that, we will cover the new material for the evening. An ba'd al-hukama in sha'ir al-iman ar-ra'd taqwa wal-haya wal-shukru wal-sabr. As we know, we have been going through the councils of four in four by the Imam, and he is transmitting to us sayings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions and other Salihin and Sadiqeen, Awliyaullah, in way of nasiha to us, inshallah, for our journey in our spiritual development. So the first one is a saying of some of the wise ones. The symbol of faith, Iman of all, Taqwa, Haya, Shukur and Sabr. These are the qualities. When you have them, that means you have proper Iman. Taqwa, Haya, Shukur and Sabr. We went and explained these in detail last week. عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال الأمهات أربع أم الأدوية وأم الآداب وأم العبادات وأم الأماني فأم الأدوية قلة 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 الأكل قلة الأكل وأم الآداب قلة الكلام وأم العبادات قلة الذنوب وأم الأماني الصبر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم told us last week symbolically speaking metaphorically speaking mothers are four 
the mother of cures, mother of medicines, if you like, mother of manners, adab, mother of ibadat, mother of worship, and the mother of hopes, alamani. The mother of cures is eating less. The mother of manners is speaking less. The mother of worship is sinning less. And the mother of hopes is sabr, patience. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand the things that we learn. And inshallah apply and implement in our souls, within ourselves. The next is a new material, one hadith of Prophet Sallallahu which I want to concentrate this today, today's evening talk, inshallah, ta'ala dars. وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام أربعة جواهر في جسم بني آدم يزيلها أربعة أشياء أما الجواهر فالعقل والدين والحياء والعمل الصالح فالعقل والدين والحياء والعمل الصالح فالغضب يزيل العقل والحسد يزيل الدين والطمع يزيل الحياء والغيبة يزيل العمل الصالح صدق رسول الله فيما قال أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are four Jawahir Jawhar Subtle qualities Literally translated Jawhar means gem, precious stone Four gems within the body of the son of Adam In all and every human being That are destroyed, removed, erased Made it turn into ineffective by four things. There are four gems, qualities that Allah SWT has given to us. When four things come, this becomes switched off, useless, completely. These four qualities, gems are the jawahir, the precious things, the qualities, attributes, if you like. The first one is aql, intellect. The second one is deen, religion. Third one is haya, modesty, bashfulness, shame. And the last one is amalu salih, good deeds. Then Rasulullah explains. Ghadab, anger, removes the intellect. When ghadab comes, intellect, aql goes away. Logic stops. These begin to work. Hasad, when it comes, it removes the deen, religion. Tama, hirs, greed, excessive desire. Removes the haya from person, shame from person. They sink so low that they can do anything. And fourth one, ghiba, backbiting, removes all the a'mal as salih, good deeds that we've done. There is nothing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better than husnul khuluq, good character, basic right, basic attribute of every Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, in yawm al on the day of judgment, 
There is nothing other than the two which will be heaviest on the scale of a Muslim. No other deeds ever be as heavy as these two things. And these two things will be the main cause, reason for a Muslim to enter into paradise. Two things. One is a taqwa, piety, God consciousness. And the second one is al husn al khuluq, good character. Good character, akhlaq, attributes. Basic, akhlaq al-hamida, akhlaq al-hamida, praiseworthy attributes, as opposed to blameworthy attributes. Akhlaq al-razila, akhlaq al-hamida, praiseworthy attributes, and akhlaq al-razila is blameworthy attributes. It is fard upon every Muslim to know what is akhlaq al-hamida, so they can instill these good deeds into their hearts. They can acquire these basic attributes, characteristics, emotional states. And it is also fard upon them to know what is akhlaq al-razila, bad attributes, harmful attributes that a person might, may possess and therefore we can erase, cleanse. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He who has achieved in this purification process, got rid of the akhlaq al-razila, blameworthy attributes, has indeed succeeded. Successful is indeed the one who has purified himself. But if you fail in this project, this objective, then you have lost indeed. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّهَا Finished. خلاص. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in one particular hadith says, مَا مِنْ ذَنْبٍ أَعْظَمَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مِنْ سُوءِ الْخُلُقِ There is nothing worse in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is great in, the, in terms of bad, evil, than bad akhlaq. Su'il khuluq. Not husnul khuluq. Su'il khuluq. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gives the example, gives the reason. ذَلِكَ إِنَّ صَاحِبَهُ لَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْ ذَنْبٍ إِلَّا وَقَعَ فِي ذَنْبٍ Because of this bad attribute of having bad akhlaq, is as such, sooner you come out from one particular bad deed, that you try to protect yourself for just a temporary period, because of that bad nature that you have, bad akhlaq that you have, it will force you as a force of habit back into another haram. From one haram to another haram. One haram to another haram. You say one, okay, you fight. I'm not going to smoke today. Uh, tomorrow you do something else. Because it is within you, within the heart. The people with good akhlaq, they always confess their own mistakes. And they try immediately to amend their ways to purify their inner. They make tawbah. They find a way of cleansing their inner. And they will succeed in this endeavor. Rasulullah sallam, in terms of praising husn al-khuluq, he says, al-khuluq al يذيب الخطايا كما يذيب الماء الجليد والخلق السوء تفسد الأعمال الصالحة كما يفسد الخل العسل The way good akhlaq, good characteristics in a person that you have instilled, the way it works is like the water. It just washes away. It washes away. But in this case, as Rasulullah says, water melts away the ice 
any eyes of sin will be melted away with good akhlaq. Good akhlaq is a person who is humble, who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. If he, go, if he does wrong with somebody, he asks for forgiveness. He is humble, he is not arrogant. He doesn't get angry quite easily. He is halim. He is, he's got sabr. His heart is full of generosity. Easy for him. So through a good, ak- a good akhlaq, good smiles, good words, bad deeds, bad deeds, sins will be washed away, melted away like ice. He says, on the other hand, bad akhlaq, su'il akhlaq, is like vinegar will spoil the honey. No matter what you do, it will spoil it. This jawhar, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions, the gems within us, subtle faculties that within us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given within us, not within our bodies, within our ruh. Aql, intellect, is, a, is an aspect of, aspect of our ruh, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put. Nafs, aql, ruh, from the same source. What makes us intelligence is our soul, not our body, not the size of our brain, not the size of our heart, not a physical, nothing to do with it. You take the ruh away from the, uh, the, away from the body, it's a just piece of flesh, organ, not a junk, I'm not going to say junk, it's a heap of organic matter. Nothing happens. What makes this talk that makes you understand is the ruh itself. It is not this physical, biological matter called the tongue. The ability to speak, nutuq, is from the soul itself. Your ability to perceive what I'm saying and understand, have idraq, is from the soul itself. These are all subtle jawhar within a ruh that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instilled in it. So, as human beings, we need to understand these gems within us, how it works, how it can work for us, and how, how it can work for against us, against us. We need to understand. And it is far upon us to pursue a particular line where we try our best to use the aql, intellect, a soul, a ruh, against the nafs, against the shaitan, against the other challenges that we have, so that at the end of the day we win, we succeed in our imtihan, in our test. Our ulama, our Islamic scholars, when they're explaining this particular concept, they say within the mahiyya, mahiyya, within, within the uh, inner of every human being, within the soul of every human being, there are few jawahirs, which many of the other emotional states, other attributes emanate from. Many other attributes, good or bad, emanate from. We need to understand. From three mansha. Three sources within us. One is our faculty of perception, idrak, intellect, aql, which gives way to nutuk. So they use the word nutuk, ability to speak and express intelligently. So this is the first quality, nutuk. Ability to speak, a tongue represents a tongue. What does Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says? You promised me two things. I promised you Jannah. This one and what's the other one? What is between your private parts? Lust, shahwa, shahwa. Second one. The first one is speech. Sh- second one is shahwa, and the third one is. Ghadab, anger. Ghadab, anger. Islam is 
a divine religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Islam to teach us what is balance. In all of these qualities, negative or positive, according to our ulama, there is an extreme. If it be, if it let in the hands of a nafsul ammara, it can be absolutely abused. These three qualities. We call this ifrat and tafrit. Too much excess, too little of it. Too much of it and too little of it. Islam shuns both. Islam brings the i'tidal, the balance. Islam brings the balance. Islam teaches the balance. In terms of our speech, mutuk, using our tongue, so to speak, is when a person wastes his time on learning things that he will never and ever use in his life. Wastage of time. So it can be such a chatterbox. This excessive learning which is used for trivia and no good end is called jarbaza. Jarbaza. <laughs> MashaAllah, he's very articulate. He knows how to talk, but he talks absolute nonsense. But he's so good with his witty words that he can mesmerize you. But to what end? It means the other extreme, the other extreme is called Balaha or being Ahmaq. Simpleton, stupid, dumb can't speak, can't use this. One is too quick with the tongue, the other one is <laughs> too absolutely useless with the tongue. Islam does not approve neither of them. When intellect is used and the Sharia ah guides, Quran and Sunnah guides, when you hold your tongue, when you're supposed to hold it, when you're supposed to speak, speak in a very beautiful way, in a positive and constructive way, not the destructive way. This is called hikmah. Hikmah. Wisdom. When our ulama speak, when awliyaullah speak, when anbiya speak, they never speak anything nonsense. They don't speak for the sake of speaking. Let's have a chat. No. Asumt afdal. Remember we talked about a couple of weeks ago? Silence is better in that case. Or in such a way that you don't talk at all. Like some of the monks, they take an oath of silence. They don't talk at all. And some people are so quiet that they can't even communicate anything at all. Or they can't open their mouth because they're too... Ahmaq. This is not on. Ghadab, the second attribute. Ghadab means anger. Anger is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put within us. When the nafsul ammara is under attack, our operating system, the one who controls our body, the one who cares about ourselves, the one who wants to do self-preservation, when he is under attack, anger comes in, turns into fear sometimes, turns sometimes to defend itself. Okay, you either run or you fight back, depending on what you see. But which is positive. Positive. But majority of the time, when anger comes, anger becomes destructive. So, again in anger, in anger, there is the ifrat, there is a tafrit, 
and there is the balance. In Ghadab, extreme is called Tahawur, meaning you do not care for the consequences of your action. <coughs> Spare of the moment you become so hot, like the Patan sometimes when they lose it, when the uh, fuse blow up, they don't care about the consequences. And they cause so much damage to their environment and to themselves, and without thinking the consequences, without any ta'anni, constantly with ajala. Al ajala tu min al shaytan, al ta'anni min al rahman. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, ajala, hasting, quickly, quick, 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 quick. Tahawur is called is when you're in that situation, spur of the moment, quickly, you become so hot-headed, you just destroy. Not a good thing. Tahawur. The other one is called Jubun, the opposite extreme. Hit him on the head, <laughs> nothing. Somebody swears at your wife in front of you. <laughs> Somebody insults your daughters in front of you. <laughs> I'm a pacifist man. They're about to kill your parents. <laughs> You're a coward. Cowardice. Jubun. Uh -uh. Islam does not condone any of them. Brings a balance. Called Shaja'a. Shaja'a, Vela. Where? With Hikmah, with wisdom. You know how to act. Under certain circumstances, this is what's needed. Most of the time, this is what's needed. Sometimes this is needed. You don't get angry unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. And in certain cases, you need to get angry. Rasulullah under no circumstances, used to be angry when he was attacked personally. Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu an, he said, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into Medina from Mecca, I came to see him. Abdullah ibn Salam was a Jewish rabbi, one of the ahbar, one of the highest of the Jewish rabbis in Medina, most respected. When he came and looked at Rasulullah's face for the first time, he says, this is not a face of a liar. He says, this man is true. He says, I looked for every, every attributes that we know from our books that a prophet should possess, he had it, except one thing, he says, except one thing. I couldn't see how does he react under when he's insulted personally? So he says, I had to devise a particular method of finding this out. Rasulullah somebody came to him and asked for some help, food, wheat, something. He didn't have anything. So Rasulullah never and ever used to say no to anybody when they asked for anything. He asked, could anybody give me, can I borrow from them so I can solve the problem of this brother of mine? I can give it to him so I can pay you back? Abdullah ibn Salam says, I saw my opening opportunity. Ya Muhammad says, I'll give you some. All right. Two buckets full of wheat. By next Wednesday, I shall give you back. Okay, no problem. By next Wednesday, 2 o'clock. <coughs> came Friday. Abdullah ibn Salam came, acting really tough. He says, you guys never keep your promise. You said you're going to pay me back. You haven't paid me back. You, you borrowed this weed from me and you haven't paid me back. In front of everybody. Omar radiallahu anh, sitting there, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, sitting there. And he came closer, closer, and grabbed Rasulullah sallam's collar and start pulling and pulling. He says, you, you, uh, insulting. Omar is shaking. Omar is about to. The more 
he screams and insults Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The more Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam just with a smile on his face just keeps quiet. Hilm, hilm, forbearance, clemency, and Omar is about to hit him. He says, hold on, just hold on. The man is asking for his rights. Although we have another three days to go, four days to go, he wants it early. It's okay, do we have anything, Omar? He says, yes, we have. We got some in the, uh, in the, in the, in the in, in a, uh, warehouse, okay? He says, you give him what we have borrowed and plus an extra one more bucket on top of it. He said, why? Because you scared him. You were about to hit him that he was so scared. He says, you scared him as a compensation for him. Omar says, because Rasulullah said, yeah, this is what he has to do. So they went together to the warehouse. As soon as they turned the corner, Abdullah ibn Salam said, hold on. Do you know who I am? He says, I don't know. I don't know who you are. He says, I am Abdullah ibn Salam. Oh, the Jewish one, the uh, alim, scholar, the rabbi says yes. Do you know what, what I did, the things that I did? He explains to him. He says, one thing that I did not see openly, because I did not experience, was this helm. When, when you get angry with somebody and you really insult that person, the person does not respond in the same manner manner. So he says, I insulted Rasulullah He did not respond like the Prophet supposed to do. A Prophet وسلم, all the Prophets will never respond because it's a personal attack. They will not defend their nafs in that regard. Because they're not in it for their own nafs. He says, be witness ya Umar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. I'm convinced that he is the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go back. <laughs> and they go and sit in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and declares his shahada. But, on the other hand, if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw some injustice happening, somebody's haqq, somebody's rights are being cheated, and somebody's being hurt unjustly, treated unjustly, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's shaja'ah, will, his anger will come to him. Then they say, we will know that Rasulullah will be angry because this particular vein between his two eyebrows will be filled with blood. Never and ever for his personal things. But when it comes to defending the poor and the weak, he will become so strong until the haqq and the right of that weak is fulfilled, restored, he will not quieten down. So, if something happens to you, are you at the extremes of both? Na'udhu Billah, Islam is not. And we're not like the Christians. Hit what they call smack on one face, okay, turn the other cheek. No. Haq is haq. If you tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye. Not a problem. There's haqq. Yes, it's easy to forgive and whatever is virtues to forgive. But in order to fulfill justice, you can also seek justice. Anger. Ghadab is such a strong emotion within ourselves that it can be very positive. It can help us to defend ourselves, defend our family. When we become angry, we defend ourselves. We protect ourselves. But if it's overboard, we become destructive. One day a person came to Rasulullah sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, awsani. Please give me some advice. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrates this particular hadith. Rasulullah sallam gave him one word, one word advice. Actually two words. La taghdab. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Subhanallah. He said, okay, Ya Rasulullah, give me another one. La taghdab, don't get angry. Subhanallah. He says, okay, give me another one. I understand. La taghdab, don't get angry. Ghadab is such a source 
of bad character, that from it many other qualities come out. Negative attributes come out. Kibr is a child of Ghadab. Hasad is a child of Ghadab. Ghibah is a child of Ghadab, anger. Many people, as soon as they become angry, as soon as they become angry, they lose everything. All the things they have done for so many years, with a moment of anger, in a moment of fit, they can destroy their relationship with their ustas, their teacher, their parents, their uncles and aunties. One moment of anger. We cannot control this any longer. Cannot control these any longer. Cannot cannot control this any longer. Therefore, one moment of weakness where shaitan comes in to the person and takes control over his faculties, his intellect is out. His intellect, aql is out. If he were to cool down and think what he's doing, he will, he will be 100% in control. But because he's no longer in control, what happens? He becomes destructive. Rasulullah is saying to this person, you're a very good person when you're sober, when you're calm and quiet, when you're not angry. But the moment the anger comes into you, shaitan comes into you, shaitan controls your emotions, then what happens is that you become destructive. They call it anger management. If you cannot manage your anger, Islamically speaking, you become destructive. You become destructive. Rasulullah when he's describing a Muslim, he said, Muslim will have taqwa, faqudin and husnul khuluq. Muslim will have the deep and subtle understanding, uh, understanding of the religion and a Muslim will have husnul khuluq, good character. And when he's describing a munafiq, he says a munafiq will never have these two. Husnul khuluq and fiqh al-deen, he'll never, he'll never have. No subtle, deep understanding of the religion or good akhlaq. When Rasulullah also describes a munafiq's character, he says, How many traits? Three. In a different hadith, four. What is it? When he speaks, he lies. When he promises, he betrays. When he, what does he do? When he trusts something, he betrays. Correct? The fourth one, Rasulullah says, when he becomes angry, he becomes foul. How? I'm walking on the street, I bumped into him, okay? As a normal behavior, courtesy, I turn, I'm sorry, excuse me. What if he comes around and starts bashing me up? Start punching because he's angry. He got angry because I tripped on him or uh, spilled his coffee. And he start not only bashing me up, he gets a stick in his hand, start breaking my arm. For what? For a little crime that I've done accidentally, he goes overboard in his anger that he destroys. That's what I that's what one of the attributes of a munafiq. Overdoes his anger. He breaks everything. So the, the, Plates flow, I mean, the fly in the air, and all the expensive vases. Doesn't matter what it is, it is a sign of nifaq. Anger, cannot control. So, ghadab, when ghadab comes in, Rasulullah says, Fal ghadabu yuzilu aqal. Aqal is a quality. An attribute, a beautiful gem, jawhar, that Allah SWT has given to us. Through aql we survive, through aql we understand, through aql we, uh, we have hikmah, we have wisdom. Through aql we judge, through aql we survive, through aql we negotiate, through aql we appreciate, through aql we perceive. When then the ghadab comes, we are reduced less than a reptil reptilian state of being an animal, savage animal beast. 
How many people burn houses in a fit rage of anger? In a fit, in a fit of anger they go and kill children and women. Anger. Muslims are plenty of it these days. Anger. We are boiling with anger these days. Which is the completely the opposite of the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The third quality is shawa. Remember, first one is nutuq, second one is ghadab, third one is shahwa. Shahwa is lusts, desires, temptations, what, the, what not the heart, what the nafs desires, nafs al There is ifrat, ifrat and tafrit. Too much of it, too little of it. Shahwa. The middle path. The wisdom, the equilibrium of shahwa is called iffa. Iffa, being chaste. We love it so much, we name our daughters afifa. Afifa is full of iffa. Beautiful, balanced, perfect. It's necessary, it's needed for us to survive. Our need for food, our need for sleep, our need for what the, what the nafs wants in i'tidal, in balanced way. When it comes to carnal desires, there is the i'tidal again. But there is ifrat and there is tafrit. The ifrat of shahwa, lusts, is called sharah. Too much, it'll be always causing you to commit zina. Lewata. Always causing you to lie in order to achieve what you want. Steal, become fraud in everything that you, you desire. Shahwa, lust, hankering after. Too much, you can't control. In terms of carnal desires, we call the dirty old men. Is a person who is at the ifrat level. He's 70, 75, still chasing women. Because he can't control. He's at that. Or the other opposite. Humud. Is when you are absolutely lacking shahwa. Oh, I don't want to live. Life is not worth living. Get married. Oh, who wants to get married? Have children. Oh, I don't want to eat. Can't be bothered. Oh, this dunya, nothing. No. We need a balance. When you have this aifa, when you have when you have this ability to be, have haya, embarrass, balance way, you will work for your food. You will earn your good living, wholesome living. You will get married. You will have a decent, chaste life. You will have children. You will enjoy your life within the halal boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set for you. But if you go outside these boundaries, you go to harams. You go to harams. Some of the companions decided this life is not, this, this life is so short and they like ibadah so much they can't handle the responsibility of wife and children they decided to incarcerate themselves three of them got together they said I can't handle this let's finish this off let's incarcerate ourselves and so can, I can pray all night long the other one he says I want to fast all day long every day the other one He says, I just want to concentrate on my ibadah day and night that I don't do anything. No talk, no nothing, just, just ibadah, ibadah, ibadah. When they came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, I am the most muttaqi amongst you. I'm the one who fear Allah most. I am the one who knows Allah most. I am the most beloved of Allah. I am the best of creation. I am the ultimate Example. And yet, I marry. I sleep with my wives. I have children. I eat. I sometimes fast, sometimes don't. 
I do my ibadah, I get up for tahajjud. I pray fajr, I pray five daily salat, extra some more voluntary salat. But I never neglect anything. Neglect anything. The balanced way is my sunnah way. He who does not follow my sunnah is not one of me. La ruhbaniyata fi deen. There is no monkhood in Islam. No celibacy in Islam. You can't say, that's it, I'm not going to get married again, just the ibadah. No, that's ifrat, tafreet. Ifrat is the, the opposite. Na'udhu billah. Balance is ifrat. Our duty is to understand these main sources and inshallah ta'ala to the best of our ability our challenge as in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu says la ruhbaniyata fi din walakin jihad there is no ruhban no monkhood in Islam but there is struggle there is jihad at all levels including the temptations of your nafs al-ammara including lack of motivation in your nafs al-ammara to do good things you need to struggle, you need to make jihad constantly and at the highest level is the physical jihad and when you begin to protect the borders of our deen, of our Muslim families, of our Muslim lands and when you have to witness with your own body, with your sword in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's required, it's all different levels but the greatest jihad is to fight with your inner because this jihad is continuous 24-7. The other jihad is maybe once in a lifetime. Maybe you never get a chance. But the other jihad is every day. Aduwka bayna jambayk, Rasulullah says. Your greatest enemy is between your colors, your desires. You, your greatest enemy is yourself, not anybody else. Your father is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. Your brothers and sisters is not your enemy. Your colleagues are not enemy. Your boss is not enemy. Your teacher is not your enemy. Your neighbor is not your enemy. The police is not your enemy. Government is not your enemy. Your enemy is yourself within you. Your duty is to know, learn, study at the hands of a doctor. Understand yourself. Then continue to struggle. If you were to continue this struggle ceaselessly, inwardly and outwardly, in order to realize the reality, haqiqah, of Islam within you, then you're a real Muslim. If you do not, you're just one of the common people who came here, whose lives are managed by the dictators of the people around them, the system. You go to work at in the morning, come at night, sit in front of the telly for four hours and go to sleep again. And after that, the following morning, you do the same thing. Come back at night, sit in front of the idiot box or internet, another four hours. And the following morning, you go to the same thing. Weekend, you sleep in until 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Get up and do some little activity with your family. And at night, you go to sleep again. The whole life is spent in this format. This is not life. You need to understand who you are. You are created for a purpose. The second Rasulullah says, the second thing which will erase, completely get rid of, Let's, for those people who just joined us, let's read the hadith again. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أربعة جواهر في جسم بني آدم يزيلها أربعة أشياء. There are four gems, qualities, subtleties, لطيفة لطائف in the body in the in the body of son of Adam that are removed by four things. As for the gems, jawahir are aql, intellect. Ghadab removes the intellect. Second one is the deen. Hasad removes the deen. Third one is haya, bashfulness, modesty. Tama, hirs, removes the shame and haya. And last one, a'mal al-salih, a'mal al-salihah, 
so to speak. Riba removes good deeds, amal al-salih. Hasad is a child of anger. Hasad means envy, not jealousy, envy. Envy is a disease of one of the main diseases of Nafsul Ammar. The person who is who has hasad is called hasud. And the person who is the point of this hasad, envy, is called mahsud. The person who receives this hasad from you. Hasud person has a problem with Allah Almighty. Not with the person, with Allah. Excuse me, what are you talking about, brother? Hasad is your inability to stomach, accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon that servant of his. Out of his wisdom, out of his generosity, out of his Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gift to that person, you cannot stomach. So you want that particular gift particular bounty, particular blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given onto this particular person, you don't want that. You absolutely don't want it. You have the same thing? Uh -uh, I don't want him to have the same thing. Okay, we'll give you ten more, but he's going to have only one of the same thing. So you want ten Mercedes, we'll give you twenty Mercedes and one Mercedes for him. No, I don't want him to have it. It's a disease. Hasad. There is a positive side of this called ghibta. Ghibta is when you wish to have the same thing that what your brother has. So mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him ilm and wealth. You have, you have yatamanna, you have tamanni, you hope and you desire that you wish to have the same thing with as him. This is called ghibta, this is positive. But the moment that it turns into hasad, hasad is when you don't want him to have it at all. But we'll give you 20 more, uh -uh. I don't want him to have anything at all. Safa. So he can't handle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's bounty upon this particular person. This is a disease. When a person is angry, when a person is angry, what happens? It gives a birth to kibir. When shaitan alayhi la'ana, after his so-called victory over the jinns on earth, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to earth to destroy the jinns, disobedient jinns, where he was coming up with the hope of being putting more stars, as he moved into heavens, through the heavens, and he has heard there was a new kid in the block called Adam. Still no ruh, still in that mold, waiting. All of a sudden, because somebody took his limelight, spotlight away from him, he felt angry. So his hasud, hasad, is why? Why does it have it? And why did it steal my limelight? And he came up with an excuse. He looked at him and says, is made out of what? Mud. Clay, and uh, made out of smokeless fire, energy, pure. Ana khayrum min. I am better than him. Arrogance. Seeing yourself better than others. This is called kibr. Still from the same root. Ghadab, anger. If shaitan never became angry, we would not have had hasad. Or kibr. Because he became angry. His nafs could not take it. Therefore he was raging with anger. And he has demonstrated this anger through the form of hasad and kibr. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa talks about hasad. لا 
لا يجمع في جوف عبد الإيمان والحسد simple within the body of a mu'min true believer within a mu'min iman and hasad can never be together iman and hasad can never be together what does that mean a muslim a mu'min cannot be a kamil mu'min a good muslim a proper perfect muslim if he has hasad If you go to a doctor, they do a checkup on you. And they say your kidneys are not working very well. You've got high blood pressure. Your heart is, needs a little bit more strengthening. You've got something in your brains, makes you sleepy. Or you've got something on your feet. They do a full checkup. When you go to a spiritual doctor, a murshid al mukammil, a spiritual doctor, he looks, looks at you and he says, hmm. He says, you're suffering from hasad. Hasad is very dangerous. You need to go through these following steps to get rid of Hasad. And they give you the remedy, prescription, and they supervise until, until later on, years after it comes out of you. Not immediately, years after. An Abdullah, an Abdullah ibn Ka'b. رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما ذئبان جائعان أرسلا في زري بتي غنم بأفسد لها من الحرص وطمع على المال والحسد في دين المسلم وإن الحسد لا يأكل الحسنات كما تأكل النار الحطب. إمام ترمذي narrates in his collection. He says, no two wolves could cause so much damage. Two wolves, hungry savage wolves, could cause so much damage to a flock of sheep. Compared to two things which will cause so much damage to your deen. It says in comparison to what two hungry wolves can do to a flock of sheep, there's nothing compared to two things which will do so much damage to your deen. Rasulullah says, what are they? Hasad. Envy and hars, greed, tama, will destroy your deen. Hars, tama, greed. When you're greedy, haya goes away. When it's greedy, you go and kiss the hands and the feet of the people who are worthless. You go and bow your head in front of an abd, the servant, who's worthless. Rasulullah says in one hadith, he says, when a person comes and bows, and so much so in front of a rich person, only reason that he bows in front of him is because of his money, not for anything else, because he's useless, he's a terrible person, he's a fasiq, munafiq. The moment he does this because of his money, because he's got greedy, because he wants to have something from him, two thirds of his religion is gone. Two thirds of his religion is gone. Subhanallah. Like hungry wolves, two things hasad and tama will destroy a person's religion. Wa inna al hasada la yakul al hasanati kama taakul al nar al hatab. Verily, like the fire consumes. Wood, hasad, will also consume and destroy your good deeds. Amal al salih. These are all Sahih Hadith of Prophet. 
laysa minni dhu hasadin he is not one of me who has hasad ya rabbi what am i going to do i am the most hasad person in the world i'm so jealous so envious i all go crazy and my nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says you're not one of me sorry you go and look for other prophets you look for something else if you have hasad in a different hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says لا تباغضوا ولا تحاسدوا ولا تدابروا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا Do not be angry with one another Don't lose your temper with one another Do not have hasad on to one another Do not turn your backs towards one another I don't care no always support with one another come to each other's help wa kunu ibad allah ikhwana oh the servants of allah be brothers in deen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you brothers inna al mu'minuna ikhwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you brothers hasad and Hasad removes your religion. Hasad removes your deen. Tama' removes your shame. Ghiba, on the other hand, ghiba is backbiting. That's something completely removes your good deeds. Automatically transferable. You just they pray when you begin to make ghiba with somebody. You just press the button transfer funds, transfer hasanat onto where whoever made riba to. On the day of judgment, we are, we hear from the hadith of Rasulullah sallam. Certain people will look it in their books. They said, Ya Rabbi, I didn't have any of these hasanat. Where did they come from? I didn't do any of those. Not mine. Full Hajj, full Umrah, oh, 27 times Khatim of Quran, oh, Subhanallah, thousands of records of Nawafil Salat. Oh, Ya Rabbi, Wallahi, I didn't do this. <laughs> Where did this come from? He says, These are the transferals into your account from the people who made your ghib. Backbiting. Subhanallah. Ghib. Hasad you cannot see. Ghiba you can see. When you have this ghadab, it's visible. Sometimes ghadab is within inna. inna. Hasad you cannot see. Tama' again, inna. But ghiba is when this nutuk, when this your ability to speak is used, abused by you to do something really evil on the character and the right of the other person. It is a major sin. There is not a single gathering of Muslims of today where this particular heinous crime is not committed. Wallahi, every conversation of Muslims of today. Anything to do with other people, it's all ghib. Non-stop. Listen to the talk and SMS messages of every youth talking about other people mentioning them with things that they don't want to be mentioned in front of others that's what definition of ghiba is when you Rasulullah says ghiba is when you mention somebody your brother with something that he doesn't want to be mentioned in front of others simple whatever that is could be on his jism on his badan Maybe he's tall, he's skinny, he's fat. Maybe to do with his lineage. Maybe to do with his something. Four or five different reasons. When you begin to talk about, mention that brother with something that 
He doesn't want to be mentioned, that's ghibah. Somebody asks us, we said, Ya Rasulullah, what if the thing that we're saying about him is true? Yes, that's ghibah. If it was a lie, that's iftara, buhtan, that's malice, slander. It's even double the sin. Double the sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins except certain type of sins that happens between you and other Muslim. Ghiba is one of them. Allah will not even touch with a nine foot pole that particular sin until that person forgives you. Unless you go and beg him and ask him to forgive you, if he doesn't forgive you, you had it. You had it. Ghiba is so easy to do and yet so difficult to erase. And we don't even care. It is so heinous crime. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of this from the hadith of Rasulullah Sallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talks about the riba, usury. How terrible interest riba is. And he's, he says, he says, it's a culmination, it's a combination of many sins, this riba. This lowest rank, the lowest sin within riba is, he says, like committing zina with your own mother. <coughs> riba. Committing what? Adultery, fornication, zina with your own mother. Na'udhu billah. However, he says, the worst form of usury is to slander. The honor of a Muslim brother. To make riba of a fellow Muslim brother. Riba is worst form. Aisha radiallahu anha narrates a particular hadith. Actually, she says one day somebody came to the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a woman. She came and asked a question. And while she got her answer, she was going back. She sat behind her. Whoa, what a tall woman. Oh, I think it was a short woman, one of the two. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa turned, her, turned towards her and says, Ya Aisha, you have made ghibah. You have made ghibah. Haram. It's just, just expert. Wow, she's nine foot tall, man. Basketball player. The person already knows that the person is tall, and they, they, they walk even with their head down because they, 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 don't, they, don't, they don't want to be mentioned. They, they're uncomfortable with it themselves. For you to mention that, it's riba. You're finding fault. I do not want to go ahead, but Rasulullah says, Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should speak good, say something good, or keep silent. He who guarantees for me what is between his two jaws, his tongue, and what is between his two legs, his private parts, I guarantee, him, guarantee heaven for him. Indeed, your blood, property, and honor are sacred to one another. Kull Muslim ala al Muslim haramun damuhu wa irduhu wa maluhu. All of a Muslim is prohibited to one another Muslim. His blood, his honor, and his property. O oh, people who are present here. O oh, assembly of those who have believed with their tongues, but into whose heart faith has not yet reached. Do not backbite Muslims, nor seek out their secrets. Because for whoever seeks out the faults of his brother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seek out his secret. And whoever has his secret sought out by Allah, Allah will disgrace him on the day of judgment. Even if he hides in the depths of the ocean, in the depths of his house, Allah will disclose his sickness. 
Beware of backbiting, for backbiting is more heinous, more serious than adultery. A man may commit adultery and drink wine and then repent, make tawbah. Allah will forgive him. But the backbiter will not be forgiven by Allah until his backbited companion forgives him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us inshaAllah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair jazak. If, if I can have time probably next week not next week, by the way, there is no class next week. I have an interstate commitment. I won't be here. But the week after, inshallah ta'ala, I'll be here. But the Friday that next week, there is class. Only the next Tuesday I won't be here. But Friday, inshallah, as per normal. Bidnillah <coughs> ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair jazak. We again apologize for the delay in our starting time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us his yaqeen, ikhlas and sincerity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala install within us husn al-khuluq, his taqwa, haya, inshaAllah ta'ala, hilm, inshaAllah ta'ala, hikmah, inshaAllah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and make us people of ihsan, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts and make us people of haya insha'Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala install within us adab. Give us the love of ibadah. Give us the love of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not let us leave this earth to the next world without purifying our nafsu dammara. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be well pleased with all of you. May Allah give you all the goodness that there is in this world and hereafter and protect it, protect you from the fire of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us neighbors to Muhammad sallam in Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your loved ones always be, be on Salat al-Mustaqeem. Always protect you. Give you health and give you wisdom, hikmah and wealth from halal sources. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a long life, long umr, where it is in his ita'ah, in his obedience that you shall live in this world in a state that he is pleased with you. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen al-fatiha ma'a salawat Allah Jazakumullah khair jazakum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.